30s, especially 30s and 40s, but where it was really booming and known for a lot of music, but yeah. in the jazz, at least as far as jazz is concerned, you know. Um, and it's kind of a general Kansas City jazz. It's just jazz and Kansas City. It's not a, it's not a Coltrane. It's not a. <laughs> they don't really reference, you know, artists often, right? I mean, um, I don't feel. I feel like the real jazz people can associate things. But I feel like Kansas City is kind of, in my opinion, it's, it seems though that the public opinion would be either not on the jazz radar mm -hmm. or third to New York and New Orleans or something like that. Yeah. I mean, to be honest. I mean, in Chicago, I think, is more associated with blues, but, you know, there's jazz a lot of places. Yeah. How, I mean, as someone who's more involved in the jazz scene here and internationally, how do you view, historically and currently, Kansas City's role in jazz, I guess? Historically, it was one of the big four, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you mentioned... Actually, you mentioned all four of them: New York, Chicago, New Orleans, and Kansas City. Yeah. And, uh, and that's cool company either way. I'm just saying. great company. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and it was one of the big four, you know. And now, I would argue that it still is in the top, you know, three or four, mm. but it's not necessarily recognized as such. Mm. Just, just from what I've seen, yeah. You know? Just in terms of talent or yeah, or activity level, it's had both. It's a, it's a mixed mix because there's there there's there's some cities out there that have really great players too. Yeah. But like I feel like I can go out every night and play, whether it's a gig, yeah. a jam session, or I'm sitting with friends. Yeah. There's so much music going on every yeah. night. Um, and also now there's there's been a lot like we've talked already about there's this crossover type. Mm -hmm. Of beyond jazz, mm -hmm. you know, and I, that's that's a beautiful thing to see too. That I think it's good to see Kansas City. You know, like we talked about people being very traditionalist and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that mentality is kind of, you know, yeah. like going away, yeah. which is great. I think that is good. And I, I mean, I'm just curious. Um, I'd be curious also for people that have been here longer than I have. Mm -hmm. um, how long have you lived? Roughly, when did you? I don't know what your history. I've only been here for about four years. Yeah. And so I've only been here, I've only been in the area, you know, for, um, whatever, since like 99, mm -hmm. you know, 2000 basically. But um, it does seem like, thanks to the work you're doing with bringing people together, thanks to a wide variety of things going on, um, I guess I'm really interested in culture, and I kind of would be interested in like, why it feels that way now. Not that it needs to be analyzed, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. but it's a good thing. And, yeah, and, sure. and, it's, and, I, and I'd be curious for people that have seen more of the history as to why they think that... Um, it may not have happened before, and maybe it did. And maybe we just don't know, you know, but it is it is cool what's going on, and I think that it's starting to build, and um, I don't know, it's, it's a good thing. I think I think that, honestly, like, we st what we still lack, and the reason I do this show is because, or anything that I do, is to fill a void. And I think there's a huge void in Kansas City with respect to paying attention to grassroots um, creativity, outside of the realm of an art institution such as Charlotte Street Foundation or something like that, who does pay attention and, um, and highlights it in many ways, and it's a wonderful thing that we have. Mm -hmm. And there are some others, I'm sure, but that's very high profile as far as yeah. I'm aware. Um, it's a, really a monetary kind of submit your idea, get this, and it's supportive financially, which is awesome because that's super rare. Yeah. Um, that being said, it would be super helpful if there were a local media entity that were to spend a lot of time and... and, and you know, documenting local culture. We have um, Dementia, which is like kind of a hip hop thing. Right. He's done some things. And um, and uh, Plastic Sax um, is a cool local jazz blog. Yeah. And um, uh, Jam Magazine is cool. You know, it's I think it's it, it, it serves a purpose. It sure. has a function. And it's cool that spots like YJ's, where I saw you the other night, um, have always seemed to have been, been uh, supported um, experimental culture and jazz and things. Yeah. Again, kind of a branch out of the art community. You know, visual arts. How do you view all those things? Because um, I don't. What's your experience been in Kansas City with respect to ways in which to share what you do with others, having support or having um, really outlets, whether that we have access to them or not? You know, because we have TV stations, we have radio stations, we have newspapers, right. we have some websites, but there's not a whole lot of longevity with respect to the independent um, artistic media push. Right. As as far as I see. Um, I see where you're going. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm not really going anywhere. But, That's about where I'm going. So I don't know. I mean, I think I, I know what you're thinking. I know long, you know. Long oh, well, we've talked before. Yeah. So we've well, talked we before. have ideas. I, you know, but I've been yeah. having ideas the whole time. Sure. It still hasn't manifested. Sure. But what yeah. you have maybe what we're getting at is what you have already 
I mean, you go. I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I have a counter to that. You know, it's it's been uh, interesting, uh, but it's uh, like putting on shows. You know, my, the first few shows I put on in Kansas City were strictly jazz. You know, and so in that sense, it's it was like okay, jazz media. Da 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 da. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell right, that writer, that person. Right there. Yeah. And then once we started, like the first main biggest thing we did was the like what for chocolate thing. That's the first thing I I really pushed that wasn't just jazz. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I was I I was getting to know some of the media outside of that, but. I guess what that brings me to is that there was no centralized media like that would cover both necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, like there's some that might. Yeah. But well, I don't know. Like for, okay, Plastic Sacks would probably have said something and they and I think I think Bill did say something about it. Mm -hmm. Um but it that is only reaching a certain audience, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't even know how much of that audience would have gone to the show, necessarily. Yeah. yeah. You know? At the same I mean, time, you want to give them the opportunity to be yeah. aware of it. And it's helpful that... And I'm not... I, this is not at all a complaint about a lack of coverage. Mm -hmm. I mean, my interest is not... When I say these things, I'm not really saying... Everybody, all these existing entities are doing a bad job. That's not it, because yeah. they have their own agendas that they're fulfilling in the process. Right. My thing is that I'm really... I'm, I, I don't really care about money a lot. Sure. So when you take it out yeah. of a business perspective... And you take it, you, you take it from the perspective of people doing things, mm -hmm. and people. Um, obviously, I'm completely biased because I do the same things. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, people. I mean, you know, people that I feel should be supported in their effort to contribute to culture, mm -hmm. to contribute to cultures. You know, I'm trying to avoid uh, and or move past uh, weighty terms that people would associate things with. Um, people that contribute to um, cr a creative feeling, um, an artistic feeling, a a, a natural sense of um, creation from humans <laughs> other than children, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of th ways we could talk about this. I think that's such a worthy thing, and I think there's so many people that have interest in arts and have interest in being creative and not just going to their jobs and fulfilling someone else's agenda, but, um, you know, expressing your soul, expressing your spirit in this lifetime, I think is very important. Yeah. And I just wish that there was a, you know, I guess in the artistic community, or the music community, I'll say, or the visual arts community, you have people creating. Yeah. It'd be nice if there's an, an equal, magical, can we, can we assume, can we be, you know, hope that this would exist someday, independent media community that utilizes the creations of others as the showcase to be documented, mm -hmm. which is in a small way what I try to do, the problem being I'm one person, yeah. I'm a family, I have lots of things I'm of course, involved in, but right, right. I guess that's really what I'm getting at, is it'd be super cool if there's a lot more documentation and sharing, um, because as I've learned with LawrenceHelp.com back in the day in Lawrence, yeah. that's, it's that easy. It just has to happen. You know, you have to have um, a centralized place, like you said, where you can promote a wide variety of things, but it also feeds into current um, blog and internet culture in that it's kind of cur uh, there's, there's curation involved. Yeah. You know, you'd want to, you'd have to assume that if it's on this website, it's of a certain merit that it's worth checking out. Definitely. So that it's not just like a pile of stuff. Definitely. Um, I'll stop talking about that. No, you're right. But, but uh, you have your own interests with respect to music and sound and uh, potential or current and or future nonprofit and things. I don't know if you'd like to talk about that at all. Not that you need to. Yeah. It might be a little early. But what is, you, all right, how about this? You do a lot. You're doing a lot. You're involved in a lot. Mm -hmm. What is yet to be done? What do you, What do you feel you'd like to pursue, or what are some things you might have moved into, or how do you view the the distant and near and far future? I guess for yourself. Well, you know, I think I feel like my I'm really invested in in Kansas City, you know, and and the arts community here. You know, I think there's a lot of talent. There's a lot of great people here, and there and there's a lot of potential for. Uh, like audiences like there's I think there's so many people here who would like to see this kind of stuff um so one of my things that I've been working on with some friends and hopefully you you more yeah I'd love uh, to. As, as time could progress is, is, is just bringing it all together you know bringing everything all bringing bringing the community arts community together just making people aware of each other mm -hmm. um 
thank you for saying that. Yeah, just aware. That's, I mean, that's, like that, that that's a, like a super simple concept that can get lost in my mind, or you know, yeah. that's that's exactly it. Yeah, bridging I, I, all sorts of gaps. Exactly, a wide variety of times. And I was, I mean, I was approached a couple of times two nights ago about that same subject at, in, at Tell one, me, at I mean, one in concept. Way, how did, what pe uh, a couple of people just asked me, said, you know, were asking me about, like, once one person mentioned, there's no music festival here that has all the types of music, that represents all the types of music in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And now we're just simply talking about music right now. Sure, you know, sure, there's sure, still there's way more than music, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But um, I said, yeah, you're right. You know, and... and a lot of times people don't like I'll take the community I know the best the jazz community yeah. they don't step out of the, their box because they're comfortable you yeah. know they're, they want to get these certain gigs and and uh, and just continue doing that yeah. and I think it happens a lot in other communities because we don't there's not as much crossover as there probably should be sure um, but a lot of times it takes a certain um, for instance, less less is more has a new band. All right, let's. Yes, you're yeah. not in the band. I are am. you? You are. I am. Okay, I wanted to talk about that, and we might have to wrap a little bit because the longer this all gets, the longer uh, people that watch. <laughs> but although I do have, <laughs> I will say all of them have been roughly forty to an hour. Okay. And I'm I completely fight against the idea that you have to have a short thing for people to pay attention to because I'm like screw it, this is its own thing. Yeah. All right, let's get to that real quick though as as we wrap up. Tell us about the new band that you're a part of because there's a lot of excitement about there about it yeah um it's it's a mix of people and genres you know uh the the, the guitar uh, there's two guitar players both of them who i had never met before mm -hmm. um rory and richard and 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 rory and his friend christian have their own band mm -hmm. you know christian's a bass player and they're and they're both in the, this band with with me and les it's called beard crazy um i would never well, I can't say never, but I, I don't think I would have ever met these guys mm -hmm. if it wasn't for Les just putting this band together. It's awesome. You so it's Les mean? is more as a vocalist, rapper, singer. Yeah. You play horn. Yeah. Two guitars. Right? Bass. A bass and a bass and a guitar. Or a bass, know. two guitars. A bass and two guitars. Yep. And uh, percussion, Pablo Sanweza, who mm -hmm. who I do know, and then Brad Williams. Yeah. Uh, it's my awesome. Drummers ever. So the only names you. Did